back to Build Live. I'm Tim Hewer. I'm here joined with some colleagues of mine, Lindsay QBasic. No, that's just kidding. <laughs> that's how you say her name, but she's not an expert in QBasic. Maybe. I don't know. Are you? No, sadly. Okay. We'll ask you. Bring your QBasic questions to us. Next and time. Joe Stegman, both from the Windows UI platform team and accessibility team. That's correct. In Windows. Yeah. So welcome. Thanks for uh, joining us this afternoon. Thanks for having us. And uh, both of you guys had a presentation this morning, right? Yeah, yeah. We, we did the same presentation. Same presentation. I think it's already live, so if you haven't seen it, uh, feel free to go out on the YouTube channel and look up, what was it, Windows UI Roadmap. <laughs> it's called a State of the Union Windows Presentation Platform. That sounds way better. At, and it's the only <laughs> State of the Union talk at Build today. If you watch the talk, you'll, you'll get the backstory on that. So what are, what are the three things that we should take away from that talk? Well, I think the first is that we're doing a lot of work to decouple the presentation platform from the core operating system, which gives you the opportunity to basically have access to all of the new UI features we're building on down-level versions of Windows. We're also doing a high-performance uh, React Native version for Windows. So if you want to share assets, if you are a web developer and you want to share assets between your native application, your mobile application, even your website, you can do that now with uh, React Native for Windows. And third, we're continuing to evolve the XAML Island story so that Win32 apps have access to all the same great new features that we're building in the Windows 10 stack. Awesome. So little known fact, I used to work for Joe. <laughs> and uh, he was my favorite employee, other than Carolina, who's in the audience right now. Now you're correct. And Paul Gus, who might be in the <laughs> audience right now. They're all three tied for the favorite employee. So we had, uh, when last we talked, you know, we, would, we would always draw this diagram. I'm interested in this decoupling story because we had this when we worked on Windows 10 and Windows 8, we talked about having the, the XAML layer on top of the composition layer, which was on top of you know, DirectX and stuff. So where in that kind of layering are we decoupling from the OS? Help me understand that a little bit more. So, so it's, the layering is, as you describe, it's sort of DirectX. And then after that, we have the visual composition layer and XAML on top of that. We're taking DirectX stays in the platform. But effectively, the composition layer, the visual layer, if you will, and our animation layer, and some of our input layer, and everything above that, including the whole XAML stack and the XAML framework, we're decoupling all of that and then making it available on in-market or previous versions of Windows 10. So effectively, you, you just need a, a baseline RS2 UWP application, for example, or baseline application running on RS2, and then you can now use the stack on that in any machine, uh, Windows 10 uh, greater than that. So essentially, we're taking the story of making it more capable down level That's correct. to that certain baseline that you mentioned, which, right. is, which is the RS2 build. And awesome. it works in both uh, UWP and with XAML Islands, it works on a Win32 app. So if you have an existing Win32 code base that runs on Windows 10, RS2 and above, which is what, seven? Uh, RS2 was 1709, I think. <laughs> something, something like that. Yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Anything there or above, you can now, you'll be able to use our whole UI presentation stack in your application, whether it's Win32 or UWP. And Lindsay and I were talking about this just a little bit before, is like, so when we hear, we also heard um, yesterday during some of the keynotes as well as some sessions today about the .NET Core 3 story and enabling more WPF and Windows Forms developers uh, to you know, uh, move forward with that story as well. And we were talking, how do I get like fluent design as a part of that story? And this is the XAML Islands aspect, right? Right. This is where um, you're able to use any of the controls that we're building in WinUI or in the Inbox platform today in your WPF and Windows Forms application with XAML Islands already. But as we talk about in our talk in more detail, with the .NET Core 3.0 update and Visual Studio 2019, this whole workflow gets a lot better. You're also able to use managed controls that are written in managed code. And it's just a lot easier to get started and bring UI updates to your existing apps. Awesome. And then one of the other things is part of the, uh, the term we call for lifting everything up. We have something today that we call WinUI, which is our controls decoupled from the platform. So we ship them outside of Windows. This whole thing that we decouple, we call WinUI 3.0. But as part of WinUI 3.0, we're doing all the visual layer, which is our composition animation layer. We've done a bunch of new work at that layer of the platform, a bunch of new 3D improvements. And by lifting that up and now making it available on in-market versions, people will be able to use XAML Islands, which will also be lifted up. And they'll be able to take their Win32 applications and update them, not with, just with UI, but with some of the uh, improvements we've made at the 
3D visual composition layer. Yeah. And, and <laughs> one of those is my is my favorite is uh, like being able to use Lottie, right? So Lottie right. is this huge animation right. framework library, I guess, <laughs> depending on how you look at it, but yeah. resource, let's call it a, a resource. And being able to use a ton of Lottie style animations within that through these layering and these decouplings, right? Yeah, so in our talk, we actually show a demo of this. Lottie, for anyone who hasn't heard of it, <laughs> is basically a cross-platform tooling infrastructure that lets you use this whole library of Lottie files that's public um, and maintained by Airbnb. And it gives you all of these cute vector graphic animations. And you're able to use this tooling workflow to export native code on iOS, Android, web, and now Windows. What we're seeing is that on Windows, you could only do this on the most recent versions of Windows, which was problematic. And so with the updates we're making to WinUI 3.0, you'll get those same capabilities on all versions of Windows. So all kinds of cool improvements where that's one good example because it's one of the more recent things we've added to the visual layer. But the whole effects pipeline, all of the additions we've made to animations like natural motion and physics, um, all the 3D improvements that Joe was just talking about with Windows 3D and bringing better 3D capabilities to the Windows 10 stack, all of that will be available as it ships um, later this year. Awesome. Yeah, so it's great. It's all available to in-market versions of Windows, and it's available to both Win32 and UWP applications. So that's what we're most excited about, and that was really our big talking point, I'd say, this morning in our talk. That's great. I think one of the themes that we've seen at Microsoft over the past couple of years, and certainly in the .NET ecosystem, certainly, but uh, along with our tooling stories and everything, is this kind of theme of open source as well. What can you tell me, Joe, about like how has that transition from a WinUI standpoint, like how has WinUI embraced that philosophy at Microsoft? What are you guys doing about that? How can the community engage more with the Windows Dev platform with regard to open source? So we have currently um, our, our controls library, WinUI, is all open source. And it's not just open source in the standpoint of our sources out there. And you can take, we'll take pull requests. Everything we do, our spec process, how we decide what we're going to do next. We're doing all of that in the open for our controls now. So with WinUI 3.0, where we're taking the whole composition animation system, all of that up and into WinUI, our goal is to take all of that and not just make it open source so that the community can participate, but also our spec process, how we evaluate features, our doc writing process, all of that, everything we do is all in the open. It's really 100% open development. And we're, we're pretty excited about that. And right now, for, for WinUI that's out there, the controls, the community can already go there and engage. A lot of people already do give us feedback, uh, add new requests for feature requests, give us feedback on existing feature requests, make pull requests on our source, on our documents, you name it. It's already open. What, what is that like? Uh, so Joe, you've been around the UI frameworks, I think, for a, the longest time, probably, <laughs> at Microsoft. Are you saying I'm, that's a, a, I'm that's old? A, maybe, a little bit. Uh, okay. I want to know if you're offended that the sign says WinForms and not the proper name. Uh, so I've told a lot of people <laughs> that, because uh, I've been around for a long time, that I was on the, as you know, I was yeah. on the Windows Forms team. Uh, and I say Windows Forms because it's been beat into me. <laughs> because Windows Forms, we had the name Windows Forms. WinForms was owned by somebody else. They had the, back in those days, they did have domain names. That's right. And somebody registered it, and they had a company called WinForms. So we could not use it. We couldn't have it in any of our marketing literature at all. And fast forward 30 years later, I guess everybody's forgot. Everyone, everyone's fine with I it. I still work. When I last worked on it, it was a big deal. And so every time I see WinForms, I'm like, holy crap. Yeah. That's, that's, I got I think, that feedback during all of our dry runs from Joe like 10 times. And I think today I still said WinForms a few times. Yeah. Yeah. Every time I can, I like to needle them. Up. But, but <laughs> on, in all honesty, about, you know, having worked on Windows Forms and everything, like, this is a pretty big culture shift yeah. for Windows client frameworks to embrace this openness and, and being a part of the community and contributions, right? Is, is WinUI, the, the open source aspect of WinUI, does that go, how far in those decoupled layers does that go today? Uh, uh, the question, how far back does the... How, like, how, how far, like, you know, if, is the visual layer open source as well? Oh, okay, yeah, so not yet, but as part of WinUI 3.0, all of that open sourcing is on our roadmap. Oh, Today, great. just the controls are open source because only WinUI 2.1 is there so far. But yeah, as part of our decoupling, our eventual goal is to open source everything um, That's great. as we get there. Yeah, so everything that'll be in WinUI, that, that is, uh, it'll take us time. Um, the biggest thing, it takes a lot of time if, if you've taken things open source before. Uh, our test infrastructure is all based on internal 
test infrastructure and then getting everything building in the open, which you need to do to make it open source, and then making sure your code is all yeah, good enough to be shared with everybody right. in the open. Right. Uh, we, those take a, a fair amount of time. Right. But we're so, committed to it. So we talked about um, some of the controls as well. What are some of the highlights of, you know, I think every time someone talks about UI frameworks and stuff, they're like, what new widgets did I get? How can I make my app cool? What did, what did you enable for me in this release coming up? Well, I was going to say, yeah, this was a uh, part of the, about it, yeah. yeah, we kind of mixed and matched uh, on our talk on what we covered. Um, I think we've covered two things. One is controls that are already shipping in WinUI 2.1 as of a couple weeks ago, as well as some controls that are currently being developed. So in terms of new controls that were just added, animated visual player is one of my favorites because that's how you get access to Lottie. Yep. Um, but I think there's a lot of good improvements that are going on. Um, what's your favorite? Well, um, there are the oldie but goodies. We're just adding a tap control back, which is used in the new the terminal. In the terminal, yep. exactly. <laughs> so yeah, I know it's about, it's about time we had a tap control, yep. but we do have a tap control in the platform. We're doing you know s some of those standard LOB controls. We're doing input validation in the platform, which is kind of nice. We did um, a teaching tip, which doesn't seem like much, but sometimes you do these little unexpected things, that, and a lot of people use it. And a, basically, a teaching tip is first time you run an app, and it says, by the way, we've updated this, and we've updated this, and it'll do it once, and then it'll go away, or the developer can set it. But just that project has been just fun doing. We got, it was one of the first things we tried open source. We got a ton of feedback. So it's just been kind of a cool to go on that ride, taking that thing as one of our first I'm, open source. I'm seeing open a things. vision of combining teaching tip an animated visual player for a WinUI Clippy. Oh, Absolutely. I mean, yeah, <laughs> I'm ready could, for it. You could be a program manager on the UI. Yeah, I, I, you, you could. Step three, profit. <laughs> profit. Yeah. Uh, I, which, does that have anything to do with your shirt there, Tim? Hey, well, <laughs> you know, we're embracing open source in the client community, right? OK, I didn't. Yeah. Yes, of course. I, I, I didn't realize we could wear our ad <laughs> so uh, anyway, kickbacks yeah, it's great. Way. Actually, it's a, it's a good lead-in question uh, too. Let's talk about like your your relationship, the UWP platform. You mentioned React Native as, as well in those yep. efforts. Um, you know how how are you addressing like you know the the mobile landscape with React Native and Xamarin? You know both of these platforms kind of living on top of the native UWP layer. Yeah. So the the one way we think about the they're they're both analogous, and Xamarin and Xamarin Forms are great solutions for the .NET developer who wants to target mobile and maybe target desktop as well, and to be able to share assets between mobile and desktop, or just between iOS and Android even. And React Native is an analogous version of that that allows you, if you're a web developer, to be able to share assets between now your mobile applications, iOS and Android. So you can write, not really write once, but you can share assets easily um, between iOS, Android, and now we have a high fidelity desktop implementation. And with React Native, you can also share assets via React with even your web properties as well. So we think of them as kind of two heads that address different types of developers, but solving the same kind of problem, which is efficiently building cross-platform apps, which is mobile and desktop. And based on your skill set, you might choose one versus the other. Great. That's awesome. So we've got about a minute and a half left. And I see a couple questions come in. So let's see if we can tackle some of them. All right. uh, Kevin's asking, will the WinUI 3 release be aligned with support for .NET Core 3? Do we know dates on those yet? So they're not aligned. We're, it's somewhat orthogonal. We can do .NET Core 3 requires us to do, actually, the .NET Core team has to do some work to make .NET right. Core 3 work. But they can do that work independent with us having to update, if you will, WinUI, per se. There is a commitment to do the work. We just don't have a time frame yet for getting .NET Core 3 support for, if you will, .NET Core 3 support for UWP. It's a little weird because WinUI works on Win32, and .NET Core 3 works in uh, Win32 as well, if you will. So you could use WinUI via XAML Islands with a .NET Core 3 app. Yeah, everybody gives me that. gets really confusing, but you could. Yeah. So it's .NET Core 3 for UWP, and that's the Got thing it. that is not yet targeted. And once we do that, you'll be able to do a .NET Standard 2.1 app in your, in your UWP. Awesome. So we're just about out of time. Thank you, Lindsay and Joe, for joining us, summarizing some of the highlights for WinUI. Look forward to engaging with the community and the WinUI roadmap. Thanks for having us on. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. You won't want to miss our last segment of the day coming up, open source passion with Hanselman. <laughs>